felt like a lot of people doubted me. You know, after the injuries I had, you know, he, he's not as good as his rookie year. And then I proved a lot of teams that I'm back, you know, and I feel that way. I feel like, you know, really nobody can guard me, so. Tyreek Jameer Evans, born September 19, 1989. On May 17, 2019, Tyreek Evans was banned from the NBA for violating the term of its anti-drug program that prohibits drug abuse. He was eligible to reapply for reinstatement in 2021. It's 2022 now, and my Instagram feeds are filled with Tyreek Evans' workout clips that have people excited that maybe this means the 32-year-old, drafted before two-time MVP Steph Curry, is attempting an NBA comeback. If you've been watching basketball at least since 2009, you understand how shocking that news is to hear of the former fourth overall pick that came in and saw instant success as a rookie, doing something only Oscar Robertson, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James had up to that point. 20-year-old Tyreek Evans was poised to become at least a star in the NBA and prove many people right that believed in his potential since he was a star high school basketball player, ranked top 5 in his class, averaging 32 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals. What I liked most about Tyreek Evans is he was completely confident and fearless, and I don't use that to mean in his attack on the court but his mentality about who he wanted to be. With his game style, it's not easy to find yourself consistently in roles where you dominate 90% of the shot clock with the ball in your hands without the team or fans feeling you're being selfish. But with Tyreek, he knew just what to do with it no matter how much time he took off the clock. And most times, at that level, he made something positive happen. One thing I like about basketball is you can be a fan of it in so many ways. Some like it for offensive explosion, defense, evolution, passing, post-dominance, or team-building success. For me, I always get excited about ball handling and ones that became masters of it. Maybe because of Tyreek Evans not becoming what many thought he was supposed to be, he isn't mentioned when you talk about best handle of recent times, but to me, he was one of the coldest, completely unique. I've never seen a handle package like Tyreek's before or after his time. He had that extremely low to the ground and awkwardly long extension that personally, I think got many defenses because you just couldn't time the awkwardness of it. You might predict his move perfectly, and he'd still lean you because of how low and unique his dribble was. So although, yes, he dominated the ball, you could watch him dribble all day. And to think Tyreek Evans was more than handled. He was a star. And then things went downhill and got surprising that in 10 years he'd be banned from the NBA. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it. Tyreek Evans is a 6'6 point guard, shooting guard, and small forward. That sentence in itself gets you excited what type of player this could have been. He's from Chester, Pennsylvania, and by high school he was being compared to Larry Hughes, Jamal Crawford, and Tracy McGrady. On the high school level, Evans was as big a star as they come, especially on the East Coast respected on the playground and in the gym for his smooth game and ability to stand out even among fellow stars of his peer group. By his senior year, he was a scoring machine that was selected to the McDonald's All-American game, winning the game's MVP. I still remember watching that game with the memory of Tyreek Evans rarely passing, which solidified his confidence to me. It was his show, and he not only knew it, he owned it. In the end, he chose John Calipari and Memphis to become next in line of Calipari point guards to stars in the NBA. Stunt number one, put the ball in his hands. Whenever you do that, good things happen, especially for Evans individually. What I didn't understand early is why coach after coach would use Tyreek in any position other than point guard. When he has the ball in his hands, he's always been at his best and most effective. With that said, 
him not being able to have the same effectiveness at other positions that suited his game within an NBA offense is what not only confused coaches, but hurt his longevity. At Memphis, it was easy to use Tyreek Evans, or any player for that matter that dominated their high school class and has talent to become a future NBA lottery pick. You just let them go. They fit in any offense because they are the offense, expectedly. In Tyreek's case, he was the perfect guy for the job. Credit to Cal because he's one of the few that had that mindset early on as a college coach, understanding that these kids come there because they want to further their basketball careers or at least prioritize the chance to. Not letting them become their true self as early as possible to me doesn't make you a good coach. It wasn't easy for Cal nor Tyreek to adjust because throughout high school he played the shooting guard and small forward positions, but with his ball dominance it only made sense to give it to him sooner rather than having defenses already set up and able to scheme against him. After the 11th game, the change was made and Tyreek flourished. He went undefeated as the starting point guard for the rest of the season until losing to Missouri in the NCAA tournament and was the only freshman finalist for the National Player of the Year award. He averaged 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists while shooting 27% from 3 in 37 games before expectedly deciding to enter the NBA draft where he was selected 4th overall by the Sacramento Kings as mentioned before Steph Curry and DeMar DeRozan. Not to mention future All-Stars Drew Holiday and Jeff Teague. The Kings used him at point guard his rookie year and didn't regret it after he posted 25 and 5, becoming one of only four rookies to do so at that point. After a down sophomore season and the addition of point guard Isaiah Thomas in year three, the Kings experimented with playing Tyreek off the ball at the shooting guard and small forward positions. He struggled for a few reasons. He was never the best outside shooter as it takes time for him to get in his rhythm with the ball and defenses knew that. Also on defense, he usually guarded the taller guard, which wasn't his best attribute, so he struggled there as well, having to use so much energy on that end. His numbers suffered with this move, which led to strain on his body and eventually injuries that took away his first step and explosion. Stunt number two, when health match talent. When that happens, you almost have to throw it away not to have success. Staying healthy is the name of the game in a career where the body is the tool in which you make your name and living. I still believe Craig Oden would have been one of the best centers of his generation had he remained healthy. Brandon Roy, in my opinion, would have been better than D. Wade had he been. Let's not even talk about Derrick Rose. The list can go on for months, but in a lesser way, Tyreek Evans was hurt by small nagging injuries like plantar fasciitis, shoulder and knee soreness, and a troublesome ankle that hindered his development early on. His production slipped every year since his rookie year in Sacramento, and the team decided to trade him to the Pelicans in 2013. On a team with Anthony Davis and four other players averaging double digits, Evans was still productive, averaging 15-5-5 five five for his Pelican career before having to miss all but 25 games in 2015-16 to have arthroscopic knee surgery on his right knee. He was traded back to Sacramento the following year for 14 games before signing with the Memphis Grizzlies for the 2017-18 season where he looked much like the old Tyreek Evans, having his best year since his rookie season. But he's never played a full 82 games, missing out on many development opportunities because he couldn't stay healthy. Stunt number three, being banned from the NBA. I could say many things here, like he wasn't a great shooter, team player, Memphis holding him out of games in attempt to trade him, or even being in the wrong era, which I was tempted to, because imagine Tyreek Evans in the Steve Francis, Baron Davis, Allen Iverson era. But realistically, being an NBA player banned from the NBA has to trump them all. In 2018-19, while having a down year for the Indiana Pacers, Tyreek Evans was dismissed from the NBA for two years in what the NBA described as abuse of a drug. 
not exactly specified but not assumed to be marijuana as it's not recognized by the NBA as a drug of abuse. He's now eligible to be reinstated if he passes the league's drug test and looking to sign after the current pandemic ceases. He'll be 33 years old before next season, so what's to become of Tyreek Evans now? Can he still help an NBA team, or is he a lost talent that faded out the league too soon? All in all, I think Tyreek Evans may have relaxed early on and his production slipped. After that, he ended up in one poor fitted situation after the other until finally he was kicked out for breaking the rules. He was supposed to have been a great player and was still solid at essentially 16 5 and 5 for his career. That's better than Draymond Green, who many think is a future Hall of Famer. Hopefully, he can continue his career. He was a special talent and maybe still is. Wishing him nothing but the best, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, Stunted Growth, and I'm out.